Welcome to this video. I've had quite a few emails from people that are quite concerned because they've heard there's been an outbreak of the bubonic plague in China, in Inner Mongolia. And they're concerned that there could be another uh, pandemic originating from China. So I want to go through that in a bit of detail now, because from history we know that in my country, the uh, Black Death, as it was called then, arrived in southern England in 1348. And over the next year to 18 months, killed between 40 and 50% uh, or maybe even, no one's really sure. So most people think 40 to 50% of the entire population. Four out of 10 people in the country were killed by it. So it's understandable that there's concerns. And I can put those concerns to rest now. Don't worry, there's not going to be another pandemic of uh, the Black Death. Um, there's no real possibility of that. So let's just answer that question first. Another plague, uh, another pandemic from China. If we're talking about COVID, if we're talking about COVID nineteen, yes. If we're talking about another influenza, possibly. If we're talking about the Black Death bubonic plague, the answer is definitely no. I am not concerned about that one. But it is fascinating to look at this, and as I say, there are quite a few things I think we can learn. Now, the bubonic plague, so here's news reports that plague has uh, cropped up in China. And actually, it does from time to time. This does happen. So there's outbreaks even sometimes in the United States. There's probably about, probably about on an average year, maybe a dozen outbreaks in the United States. Uh, outbreaks in various African countries, in China, even in India, it's not uncommon to have some outbreaks of plague. So this bacterial infection that caused these mass pandemics with mass fatalities in the past, the, the, the organisms haven't gone away. They are actually still there and they do rear their ugly heads from time to time. But we'll see why the situation is so different from the COVID situation. So what is plague? It's a disease suffered from by rodents and humans. Very often it goes from rats via fleas that bite the rats and then the fleas go on to bite us and cause the plague. There's a two to six day incubation period with the, the bubonic form of uh, the plague. Case fatality, if you get it and you don't get treated, there's more than a 50% chance it will kill you. Even if you're young, fit and bouncing, there's still a 50% chance that this infection will kill you if you are not treated. But of course, you can be treated because this is caused by Yersinia pestis bacteria. It's a bacterial infection and that makes all the difference in the world because we have a range of effective antibiotics that can cure this plague, providing it's caught early enough. And as well as that, the other reason I'm not concerned is that people are most infectious with plague when they are most sick. So you don't get people that think, oh, you know, I'm not sure I might feel a bit off today. I'll go to work anyway. No, no, that's not the case with plague. If you've got plague, you are very, very sick very quickly. And you become most infectious in the later stages of the plague. It happens later on. Um, and, and then when people are really sick, they're really infectious. And it's really obvious that they're really sick and really infectious. So we, we have a, it's a very visible um, infection. It's not like the current pandemic where there's a lot of invisibility with the pre-symptomatic and the asymptomatic spread. So a ring a ring of roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Probably dates back from the plague years. Now academics debate this but ring a ring of roses so there could be red rashes as a result of the infection, that's quite possible. And then what people did in those days, they made up posies. So a posy, basically it's a bag like a sock and you stuff it full of herbs and you put that in your pocket and that's supposed to ward off the disease. So ring a ring of roses, therefore you have a pocket full of posies. But does it work? No, because eventually a tissue, a tissue, you sneeze and then you fall down and, and you die because the, uh, the respiratory features in the bubonic form of the plague typically come later. So um, it, it, it all kind of fits into our culture, this, doesn't it? How is it spread? Person gets bitten by a flea that is infected typically from a rat. So the bubonic form starts off with a flea bite. Uh, but there can also be direct contact with infected tissues or fluids before or after death. So the body fluids of people, or indeed rats that are infected, will be infectious. 
and uh, people often unfortunately were infected as they handled the dead in the past because they didn't know how it was transmitted in the past. This was the same with Ebola, wasn't it? Quite a few people contracted Ebola from handling dead bodies. Uh, and there's another form, in, uh, inhalation of respiratory droplets <clears throat> after close contact. Now, apparently cats can, cats can transmit that, but I wouldn't worry too much about the cats because the cats kill the rats, so cats are probably an overall advantage. Um, after close contact with cats and humans with the pneumonic plague. So there's a pneumonic form as well. I'm going to explain what that is in a minute. So uh, in other words, it's direct contact, it's body fluids, and it can also be via droplet infection is how it's spread. But remember, it's bacterial, it's Yersinia pestis, we can treat it. And it's obvious when people are sick. Now, presentations. Now, the bubonic form of the plague uh, is caused by infected flea bites. Sudden onset of high fever. So it's going to be 39 degrees centigrade or 103 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. High fever. These people are very sick. Headache, chills, the shaking, the rigors that increases the body temperature, the weakness. One or more swollen, tender and painful lymph nodes is the other feature of bubonic plague. And that's where it gets the name. These swollen lymph nodes are called buboes. <clears throat> so buboes are the swollen lymph nodes. These days we'd call it lymphadenopathy, but they called it buboes in those days. The swellings, typically in the groin and in the armpit, typically. Hence the name bubonic plague. Because what actually happens, it's the lymph nodes that try and filter out the bacterial infection. So they become swollen with the, with the, with the bacteria and, and become very inflamed and painful as they try and filter out the bacteria, the, the, the buboes. Now, there is another form, septicemic plague. In America, of course, you don't put in the A, uh, septicemic. Um, the, 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 these days, um, we were, we were, we were, well, these patients basically have a severe in, acute inflammatory syndrome. We call it a sepsis these days, really. But uh, in, in those days, they called it septicemia. So uh, bites of infected fleas handling infected animal the same way. But what happens here is in, in septicemia, emia means in the blood. So the bacteria are spreading all around the body in the blood. So the infection is all over rather than localised, like in the bubonic form where it's initially localised. Patients get shock, that's very low blood pressure. <clears throat> they can bleed into the skin and other organs. Now, um, the thing is about the, uh, the bubonic form of the plague, that will eventually spread to the whole body and become the, uh, the septicemic form. So eventually people will, who've got bubonic form will become septicemic. because the same bacteria. It's just where this bacteria is. Now, um, the bleeding into the skin or other organs, what happens is people, <coughs> people bleed into the skin. Then the blood deoxygenates and goes a, a dark color so that they look black. And as well as that, you get shutdown of the circulation to sometimes the nose, the ears, the fingers the toes and, and they that they necrose they go black as well hence hence the expression black death the people look death skin, skin and other tissues may turn black and die especially on the fingers toes and the nose and this is reported to be extremely painful uh, if you have these tissues that are dying so 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 the bubonic form is kind of the localized form that will spread to become the septicemic form which will will kill you um, now, the, another form, <clears throat> it's all the same bacteria, but this is called the pneumonic form because here the bacteria get into their lungs. So um, it can start, So what happen happens here is if it's inhaled, if you inhale droplets from an infected person, it will go into the lungs and it will cause a pneumonia very quickly. But then you're infectious and can spread that on. So what probably often happened in, in, in people with... Um, in, in the Black Death outbreaks and the bubonic plague outbreaks, so was it started off as the bubonic form. Then, of course, it would spread to people's lungs and, they piece, and then the person next door would catch it from their lungs. It would become droplet. So it was spread very rapidly as the, as the pneumonic form affecting the lungs. So um, the pro problem there was that you got a, a very rapidly developing uh, pneumonia. Shortness of breath, chest pain, cough, as you'd expect with pneumonia, along with the fever and everything else. So they're the three main forms, really. The, the bubonic form, where, where you get the localised buboes. Uh, the, the, the septicemic form, where it's all over the body and will kill you quickly. Or the pneumonic form, 
where the pneumonia will kill you quickly. It's the same bacteria, it's just infecting different parts of the body first. But uh, it still has a remarkably high death rate. And the septicemic form, I guess the death rate there is pretty well 100%, as indeed with the pneumonic form, not many people would survive that. Centre for Disease Control in the United States says last year there were seven cases of uh, bubonic plague in, in the United States, mostly contracted from animals. Now, the history of this is uh, Yersinia pestis finds in the late Bronze Age. Now, this is absolutely fascinating, actually. If you like the, uh, the history of disease, this is really interesting stuff. Where are we? There we are. Now, um, I remember, oh, it's probably about 20 years ago now, <clears throat> there was a lot of debates as to whether these previous pandemics were in fact caused by the plague, if they were in fact Yersinia pestis. And people said, no, it was spreading so quickly, it was probably a viral disease that killed people in, in 1348. But in actual fact, now with genetic uh, advances, what people have done is to take the ear bone or the teeth from people that died of the plague. And there's no shortage of these. I mean, for example, when, when the Crossrail, the new underground system was being dug in, in, in London, um, a few years ago, they, they, they came across a great plague burial pit with 50,000 bodies in it from 1665. So um, there's, no, there's no difficulty finding these that, because they're so common. So many people died. So what they've done, actually, they've found <clears throat> remains from the, uh, the Bronze Age. And they've found the genetic fingerprint of Yersinia pestis in there. So uh, there was plague in the, in the Bronze Age. And indeed, probably even further back. There's even some intimations that Neanderthals might have had plague. Uh, then 1524, uh, the plague of so-called plague of Justinian spread around the Roman world. In 1348, the Black Death spread around pretty well the whole world, um, apart from the Americas and Australia, I think. 1665, the Great Plague of London killed about 25% of the population of London. So that killed about 25% of the population. That killed about 40% of the population of the country. These were massive things. And there's actually what's called the third pandemic between 1850 and 1904. So there's cases of, uh, of plague in uh, San Francisco, for example, in 1904. So all really quite uh, interesting. Uh, a major threat to uh, humanity, but fortunately we can treat it and contain it now. So not such a problem anymore. But it's called bubonic plague because of these buboes. I can actually show you what happened. So imagine, imagine that's the hand there. That's the thumb. One, two, three, four fingers there. And this is the arm here. Now, what, what happened was, uh, suppose someone got bitten on the arm there. Then draining all parts of the arm, you have these uh, lymph vessels like this, these lymphatic vessels that drain the excess tissue fluid away. Uh, from the tissues and these these go into progressively larger vessels as they go up the arm and eventually some of these go into the lymph nodes under the armpits at the top there so these eventually drain into the uh, into the lymph nodes like that these and uh, s several of these will drain into a lymph node and the lymph nodes um, there's a tube going out the other side of the lymph node like that taking it away to the rest of the body now, in the lymph nodes, there's very fine tissues. It's called a reticulum. It's a network. And, and what this does, it, it's, it's, its function is to, is to filter out um, bacteria and things. So what happens is that the bacteria will come in here into the tissues. And they'll be filtered through the lymphatics like this. And then they'll be sort of sieved out by this uh, lymph node here to stop it spreading to the rest of the body. But that means the bacteria can proliferate in this uh, in this lymph node. That's what happens. The bacteria proliferate in the lymph node, and you get huge numbers of them. And of course, that causes great swelling. These days, we call that lymphadenopathy, and a lot of inflammation. So the lymph nodes become very enlarged, uh, very swollen, very painful. That's what the buboes are. This is the buboes, and uh, eventually. Well, what happened is that the body might be able to contain it because there's white cells in there that will contain the bacteria and some people will survive. <clears throat> but in others, um, the, the bacteria will go on to the rest of the body. And it can go around uh, the whole bloodstream affecting the whole body. 
so it can affect all of the body via the blood so the whole body will become infected and that will cause sorry about my body that will cause the uh, the septicemic form because it goes absolutely everywhere in the blood and that will cause uh, septic uh, shock what we now call sepsis and that person would die fairly quickly in fact if someone was ve very septic even if they came into hospital these days they'd probably still die because even if we gave them antibiotics it depends how advanced the sepsis is and how advanced the shock is always important to treat it early so that, that, that so the bubonic form could become the uh, the septicemic form and uh, that person would uh, would in invariably die or alternatively um, it could go to the lungs the infection would eventually get to the uh, to the lungs So the infection would eventually get to the lungs so you'd have bacteria in the lungs and the trouble with that is that means the person would cough them out and the bacteria would come out in the air and infect the next person <clears throat> that would be the droplet infection so that would be the pneumonic form that affects the lungs so that's the bubonic form affecting the lymph nodes the septicemic form affecting the whole body and the pneumonic form infecting the lungs and the pneumonic form would rapidly lead to pneumonia consolidation the lungs would fill up with fluid and the person would die so it's the same bacteria just these three forms of the disease but anyway i'm not worried about it spreading you shouldn't worry about it spreading because um it's well understood the transmission is well understood it is uh, obvious when someone has it and it's also uh, very easy to treat now with antibiotics it's really a pity we don't have uh, such an effective antiviral drug to eliminate COVID-19. That would be really convenient. So another pandemic from China. No, I'm not worried about it. And I don't think you should be uh, either. But it's still an interesting news story. And of course, tragic for the few individuals that do get it. I do hope they've been treated at an early stage and that their lives have been saved for, from what is uh, otherwise a very high probability of death. It just shows you the way that people have lived with infectious disease and pandemics throughout human history. You know, we know this Yersinia pestis was accounted for the plague of Justinian. It was there in the Bronze Age. It was probably there in the, well, it, it almost certainly was there in the Stone Age. Um, this is not something new to humankind that we are uh, currently enduring.